Have you ever tried asking who won the IPL in 2025? Or explain the code I wrote last week. And what happens? Nine times out of ten, it just starts hallucinating. Just making stuff up, going completely off the rails. Well, if you used any LLM in the past years, whether it's ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, Grok, Mistral, whatever, you've probably run into this one big annoying problem. You ask something super specific, like a detailed question, something about yourself, some code you wrote last week, or a spreadsheet that you uploaded. And the model answers super confidently, like it knows everything. But it completely misses the point. Sometimes it just straight up hallucinates and gives answers that don't even exist. And look, the reason is dead simple. Large language models are pattern matching machines. They're incredible at regurgitating what they've already been trained on. But here's the kicker. They don't know your data, your context, or your secret sauce. And this is exactly why AI is still struggling to make a massive dent in fields like law, medicine, and compliance. You know, the places where hallucination isn't just an oops, my bad kind of situation, it's downright dangerous. Because let's be real, when you yank out your context, that fancy AI model just becomes generic, it becomes mid. But there's got to be a fix for this, right? We can't be pushing AI this hard and just leave this massive, huge problem hanging. So, what are we going to do? We've actually got two solid ways to tackle this, and today, we're going to break them down for you. Ways of fixing AI. All right, so we've got this context problem. How do we actually solve it? It turns out that we've got two main players in the book, so let's dissect them. The first option that we have is fine-tuning. Think of this as sending your AI model back to school, but this time, the curriculum is all about you. You literally take that base model and retrain it from the ground up with your own data, like your emails, your entire code base, your chats, your pictures, everything gets thrown into the mix. And it literally learns your specific domain and becomes a native. The upside is massive. Once the model is trained up, it's like it was literally born for your use cases. You don't need to keep spoon feeding it and giving it extra context every single time. It just gets it. But, and it's a big but, it can be extremely painful. Seriously. So GPU time is gonna cost you an arm and a leg. And what happens when your data changes? New data, new code, you guessed it. Back to square one. Repeat the entire process. And plus, managing versions of these huge model checkpoints is a messy logistical nightmare. Trust me. So that brings us to option number two, which is RAG. And RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. And folks, this is where things get really, really interesting. This is the street smart agile cousin. Way, way simpler. You don't even need to touch the underlying base model. No expensive retraining. Instead, you just build a clever context engine and you can just think of this as a super efficient research assistant that sits around the LLM. And then at runtime, when a query comes in, the engine zips in and feeds the model just the right pieces of information it needs, right when it needs them. Let's imagine that you're a world-class chef. You know how to cook anything, but you don't know what the next order from the dining room is going to be. With RAG, the moment that order hits the kitchen, bam, someone magically hands you the perfect detailed recipe for the exact dish. You didn't even have to reel on cooking. You just got the precise instructions that you needed. That is RAG, right there. That's the power. No retraining, live updates, and way cheaper. So now you guys understand the beauty of RAG. But why does this setup work so incredibly well? Why is it becoming the go-to for so many people trying to make LLMs actually useful with their own data? Why does RAG work so well? And here are the reasons. Number one is fast iterations. New docs, no sweat. Add them, re-embed them, and your RAG will instantly get smarter. No waiting for weeks for a retrain. Next is cheap infrastructure. Forget burning cash on endless GPU cycles. RAG is lean, minimal compute, and your wallet will always stay happy. Next is it's always fresh. Your info never gets stale. Upload a doc, your RAG adapts in seconds, and always with the latest intel. So you get speed, you can save cash, and your AI always stays current. That's a pretty powerful combo. Okay, so now you're probably thinking, okay, this sounds cool, but how does this RAG magic actually work under the hood? Don't worry, we've got you. RAG pipeline. Okay, so how does this RAG wizardry pull off giving your LLM the brains it needs without the pain of retraining? We're gonna break down the entire pipeline. And to make sure it's super easy to lock into your memory, we're gonna use an analogy. Imagine you're setting up the most insanely organized high-tech library ever built. And for all you visual thinkers out there, we've created this crazy, crazy massive diagram. So we're gonna drop a link so you can explore it on your own later. But for now, let's walk through it together. All right, let's dive in. All right, so step number one is your data intake. Imagine this being the part where the books arrive at the library. The first things first, your data. 
This is where all your books start showing up at the library doors. Think of your company's PDFs, your email archives, critical CSVs, even your entire code base, all your content. So consider this to be your raw materials, the books that need to be cataloged in our super library. Now we move on to step two, which is chunking. Now imagine this is where you're breaking down the books into index cards. Now you're not just going to cram the entire encyclopedia onto one shelf, right? So you take each book, each document, and you chunk it. You break it down into smaller bite-sized pieces, and you can think of them as individual index cards. Maybe one paragraph per card, a logical section, and the key is digestible pieces. Why? So instead of your AI librarian having to flip through 300 pages to find a single answer, it can search these cards way faster and way more effectively. Precision people, it's all about precision. So the tools that you can use for this is Langchain's TextPitum, or you can also use Llama Index. Now we're moving on to step three, which is embedding. Now imagine this to be the part where you're giving each card GPS coordinates. Now this is where the real AI magic starts to kick in. We take those text chunks, those index cards, and we run them into coordinates. Now think of it as assigning a super precise GPS location to every single piece of information in your library, but for language. The trick is that the cards with similar meaning get plotted in nearby locations in this massive multi-dimensional space. So words like similar, same, identical, they're all hanging out in the same neighborhood. Popular models that you can use for this is Google's Text Embedding API, or you can also use OpenAI's Text Embedding 3. So you have a lot of horsepower to choose from. Now we're moving on to step number four, which is vector storage. Now this you can imagine as organizing the high tech shelves. All right, so our index cards now have their GPS coordinates. So next up, we're gonna need some serious shelving to store them. And this isn't your grandma's dusty bookshelf. This is a high performance vector database. So you've got names like Pinecone, Chroma, Qdrint in the ring. Pick the one whose landing page you vibe with the most, or the one that fits your scale and budget. Seriously, they're all pretty good. And it doesn't matter if you've got a thousand cards or 10 million. These databases are built for speed. They can use semantic searches, finding those relevant meaning coordinates in milliseconds. Blink and you'll probably miss it. Okay, now we're moving on to step number five, which is retrieval. Imagine this to be the part where the librarian finds the exact cards. Okay, so now your library set up. Now user walks in with a question. So after the user asks that question, what do you think is gonna happen? So first, the RAG system takes that user's query, embeds it, and turns it into a vector, just like it did with all your documents. Then it performs a similarity search against your entire vector database and does something like, show me the top five or six cards whose content is semantically closest to this question. So those are gonna be your golden index cards, with each one of them holding a crucial part of the answer and also a relevant snippet of information. Now we're moving on to step number six, which is synthesis. This is the part where the librarian writes the perfect answer. This is where our super smart LLM, our AI librarian, steps up to the plate. We feed it those top ranked relevant chunks plus the original user query, and we usually give it a little nudge, a guardrail prompt, so to speak. Something like, use only the context provided. If the answer isn't there, just say so. The LLM then reads these carefully selected cards, understands the question in that specific context, and spits out focused, accurate and contextual answer. No hallucination, no wild guessing, and no making stuff up. It's answering like it knows your data, because in that moment, for that query, thanks to that, it actually does. So now theory is great, analogies are fun, but at Builder Central, we're all about building and shipping. So now that we walk you through how RAG actually works, how about we show you what we actually built using the same exact approach? RagBot. This isn't a full-blown line-by-line coding tutorial on how we built this specific chatbot. So we actually dove deep into N810, which was our main tool for this in a previous video. If you missed that video, make sure you check it out. The link is going to be either in the description or somewhere over here, depends on where the editor puts it. So we showed how you can visually build these kind of powerful workflows with minimal to no code. So here's our flow. For the data source, what we did is we used Google Drive and connected it via GCP. Now, the reason we did this is because it enables us to upload the documents in real time, effectively turning it into a live database. For embeddings, we used OpenAI to generate them, which was really, really easy and inexpensive. For storage, we used Pinecone as our main vector storage database because they offer a fairly generous free storage tier. For retrieval and synthesis, we used Google's API, which handled the LLM part by synthesizing answers based on the embedded chunks that were received. So what does this actually look like in action? Well, with this setup, you can throw pretty much any file at it. PDFs, Word docs, you name it. The bot chews it up, processes it, and then boom, you're chatting with your own data. So you need to ask it something specific, like what's the difference between function A and function B in this massive code base I just uploaded? And it should spit back the answer according to the document. 
It also works for CVs if you're hiring. So those complicated recipes you can never follow, dense legal documents, your chaotic lecture notes, whatever you've got. Just, you know, be smart about it. Don't upload some deepest darkest secrets, okay? That's kind of stupid. Don't do that. So what would be the end result? You can literally just drag and drop any document into the Google Drive folder. And the chatbot, it updates either in real time or on a schedule that you set. And then it's ready to answer your questions using that fresh updated context, which is pretty cool, right? JSON file for NA10 is in the description. So make sure you use that and create your own RagBot. Basically, in a nutshell, RAG is making your AI actually know your world. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's our session for today. Until next time, keep building, keep experimenting and stay tuned to build a center for more such content.